I will welcome you all again and also welcome our guest minister this morning, Minister Delphine T. Burton. Delphine Burton was raised in White Plains, New York and is a proud product of the White Plains public school system. She is a member of the Bethel Baptist Church in White Plains, New York, where she has served as the assistant church treasurer, trustee ministry member, vacation Bible school director, and currently serves as a Sunday school teacher. And as of Sunday, April 14th, 2024, became an associate minister of the Bethel Baptist Church. Delphine loves sharing the awesomeness of God with others and is beyond humbled, grateful, and thankful for his presence in her life. Welcome once again, Minister Del. On that note, let us join together in the words of welcome and call to worship printed in your bulletin to be read responsibly. O Lord, let our souls rise up to meet you. All glory be to God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Now please stand as you are able and join in our opening hymn, number 442, The Church's One Foundation, 442.
If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But when we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sin. Please join together in the prayer of confession printed in your bulletin. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you, thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to mend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of the Holy Name. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone, a new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Amen. And since God loves and welcomes us, we ought also to love and welcome one another. The peace of Christ be with you. Please let us share the signs of the peace of Christ. Stand as you are able, rise, wave, turn to your neighbors and share the peace of Christ. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. First scripture reading today is Psalm 14. Fools say in their hearts, 
There is no God. They are corrupt. They do abominable deeds. There is no one who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on humankind to see if there are any who are wise, who seek after God. They have all gone astray. They are all alike perverse. There is no one who does good. No, not one. Have they no knowledge? All the evildoers who eat up my people as they eat bread and do not call upon the Lord? There they shall be in great terror, for God is with the company of the righteous. You would confound the plans of the poor, but the Lord is their refuge. Oh, that deliverance for Israel would come from Zion when the Lord restores the fortunes of his people. Jacob will rejoice. Israel will be glad. The next reading is from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his Spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him by the power at work within us as is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. And from the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verses 1 through 21. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, six months wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over 
so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the lake, got into a boat, and started across the lake to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The lake became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the lake and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, it is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land towards which they were going. It's the word of God for the people of God. Good morning. To the members of the White Plains Presbyterian Church, church council clerk, Ms. Lewin, she did reach out to me and said she wouldn't be here. Ruling Elder Patty Nahara, who is your worship leader this morning. Ruling Elder Christine Hughes, Ms. Stella Aviles, Mr. Max Carlton, and a special shout out to Pastor Martin McGeechee. Thank you for the opportunity to declare God's word with you all this morning. I stand before you beyond grateful, incredibly thankful, and so very humbled. I will attempt to do my best and allow God to do the rest. I bring you greetings from the Bethel Baptist Church, White Plains, New York. Reverend Dr. Edward O. Williamson is my pastor. I also would like to give a quick shout out to my family and friends who came to support and worship with us today. Thank you all, and I love you all very much. Our scripture text this morning comes from the 14th chapter of Exodus, verse 14. I will be reading from the New Living Translation, and it reads as such. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. Amen. Our topic for this morning is the promises of God. Let us pray. Lord, I am humbled for the opportunity to proclaim your word today. I ask that you decrease me so that your spirit can increase and your words will flow through the hearts, minds, and souls of God's people. Amen. Since 2020, we have endured a pandemic, witnessed the unforgettable death of George Floyd, saw the public outcry of intergenerational social justice protests, mourned the death of longtime Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, observed the unforgettable presidential election of 2020, witnessed the political uprising at our nation's capital, breathed a sigh of relief when the COVID vaccines arrived, endured the horrendous stifling red-orange smoke of the Canadian forest fires, listened to various news reports about the Ethiopian civil war, the Russian-Ukrainian war, and the Israel-Palestinian war. We also celebrated the appointment of Katanji Brown Jackson, the first African-American woman Supreme Court Justice, watched the migrant crisis at the border unfold, and most recently, many of us, depending on where you were, April 5th, 2024, experienced the 4.8 magnitude earthquake. Yes, our lives now more than ever seem to parallel that of the children of Israel in the book of Exodus. But one thing is for certain, and two things are for sure. The common denominator we share is the promises of God. 
The Oxford Dictionary defines the word promise as a declaration or assurance that one will do a particular thing or that a particular thing will happen. So for a few moments, I would like your attention as I present to you the facts, evidence, and receipts. I have receipts because I can recall a time when evidence was enough to substantiate any claim. However, times have changed and receipts are needed to confirm the evidence presented is not fake news and is from a reliable and credible source. And so my receipts will prove that we serve a promise-keeping God. In the beginning of the 14th chapter of Exodus, we find the children of Israel. God had rescued them from Egypt and then brought judgment upon Pharaoh and the gods of Egypt with plague. And so, after letting the Israelites go out into the wilderness, Pharaoh wanted to exercise his authority and remind the Israelites who was in charge. So he pursued them with his army. The Israelites were spiritually and emotionally weak. They cried out to Moses complaining that maybe they should have just stayed in Egypt. Although they were enslaved, at least they were safe and well fed. With the Egyptian army on their necks and the Red Sea at their backs, the Israelites needed God to act. The underlying facts of Exodus 14:14 14, 14 are as follows. Fact one, the words, the Lord. There is a sense here that God never changes and we must relate to him in our right now moment. In other words, surrender and be willing to allow God to meet you where you are. Fact two, the words will fight for you. In God's history with Israel, he fought for them in two ways. First, God empowered them when he sent them out to fight as he did in Psalm 1834, which says that he strengthened their arms for war. Second, there were times God just fought the battle for them as he did at the case in the Red Sea, at the Red Sea. As Exodus 14 and 19 tells us, then the angel of God, who had been leading the people of Israel, moved to the rear of the camp. The pillar of cloud also moved from the front and stood behind them. So if we are willing to walk in his will, according to his divine plan, God will go to the battle ahead of us, God will equip us with the tools we need for battle, or God will just show up and fight the battle on our behalf. Fact three, the words, just stay calm. Calmness before God is a theme throughout scripture. Psalm 55, a tells us to give our burdens to the Lord and he will take care of us. And Psalm 46 and 10 is where God reminds us that we must be still and know that he is God. Sometimes it is hard for us to remain calm and trust God with all the worldly distractions at our doorsteps. Therefore, we should one, strive to be Christ-like, two, study the word, Three, give him the glory. And four, trust him. Whether God wants to fight through you or for you, remember that he will help us, but we must be willing to fully rely on him and him only. The evidence. Exodus 14, 14 is a reminder of how God keeps his promises to those who worship him in spirit and in truth. At some point in our lives, we have witnessed a tragedy or a celebratory moment of our nation's history. So it is safe to assume that our life experiences are like that of the children of Israel. For instance, during the pandemic, the world as we know it stopped. No church, no school, no work, no shopping, no human contact, learning to adjust to social distancing, 
how to understand dealing with isolation and navigating our new normal. And the list goes on. We were scared, confused, bewildered, and what many of us believe would only last a few weeks lasted three years. In the end, we had to transition from fearing the virus to learning how to live with the virus. And through it all, God kept his promises to us. How do we know this? Think about how many friends and family perished because of the virus. Think about how many people lost their minds, jobs, homes, and even took their own lives. What about all those who were sick and recovered and to this very day still have residuals from their bout with the virus? Just like the children of Israel, with all our unfaithfulness, with all the hatred we display towards one another, with all the constant backbiting, with all the nonstop complaining, with all the persistent jealousy, and with all the ill-spirited, ungodly behavior, God's mighty hand has protected us and his precious gifts of grace and mercy have kept us. I have provided you with the facts and evidence, and now I will present the receipts. As I stated in the beginning, I brought along receipts because I realize we have some modern day saints who I believe are from the state of Missouri, better known as the show me state. In other words, even though they have endured the worst of times and God has brought them out time and time again and they have seen firsthand evidence of how God can shift the atmosphere, many still doubt just how awesome, powerful, and wonderful God is. Receipt number one. Isaiah 41 and 13 states, for I hold you by your right hand, I, the Lord your God, and I say to you, don't be afraid. I am here to help you. Remember, God will always be there for you. Receipt number two, Joshua 1 and 9 states, this is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Allow God to take the steering wheel, be the GPS, and navigate the journey. Receipt number three. Let's take a moment and look around this congregation. We are the physical receipts of God's promises. As he wakes us up every morning, gives us a place to rest our heads at night, regulates our minds, and supplies us with a reasonable portion of health and strength. Yes, he keeps his promises to us 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and 365 days a year. And if you still need some convincing, I brought backup receipts. Receipt number four are words found in the New National Baptist Hymnal on page 144. I trust in God wherever I may be, upon the land or on the rolling sea. For come what may from day to day, my heavenly Father watches over me. I trust in God. I know he cares for me. On mountain bleak or the stormy sea, though billows roll, he keeps my soul. My heavenly father watches over me. And finally, I present myself as receipt number five. Four years ago, I contracted coronavirus from my mother while caring for her. Thank God I was not hospitalized, but the virus rattled my body to the core and caused quite a few medical issues. I underwent blood transfusions, several surgical procedures, and all the while I still went to work every day, remote and in person, continued my studies in my doctoral program, and maintained my sanity after visiting doctor after doctor after doctor after doctor and undergoing test after test after test. But to that end, I stand here this morning as a living and breathing testimony that we serve an amazing and omnipotent God. 
I know this to be true because through all the tears, the pain, and not knowing what was happening inside my body, I remained faithful, obedient, and trusted that during my own wilderness experience, he would not leave me or forsake me. So you see as I close, Exodus 14, 14 applies to everyone. And just like the children of Israel, we have all stumbled upon some pharaohs and faced the wilderness. But nevertheless, 2 Corinthians 1 and 20 is a reminder to all of us that the promises of God are yes and amen. God bless you. Are there any prayer slips this morning? Okay. All right. Because we're like, okay. Yes. okay. We'll continue now with our uh, hymn. And during that time, if you filled out prayer requests that you'd like to uh, be shared during worship, the ushers will collect them. So please, please pass them during the hymn. The hymn is number 434. Today we all are called to be disciples. Number 434.
Okay. We have the following prayer request this morning for Corey, Michaela, Mariah, and Annie, please. Keep them safe. A prayer for family and co-workers. Prayer for a student in college. Prayer for the Hutchins family and friend. Prayer for all problems. A prayer to keep us safe. Prayer for all countries, communities, families struggling through harsh wildfires. Prayer for clear life and direction for a family. Prayer for Ellen, Gennaro, David Coleman, Joanne Easterling, Louise Morton, Sonia Dawn Cosby, and Molly Brown. A prayer for a newborn in intensive care and her parents. Prayer for the world leaders to see a better side of reason for all people. Please take care of the elderly and the poor and the youth. The Wilson family, Sally family, Smith family. And healing of my kidney and my healing of my body. Let us pray. Dear Lord, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for allowing us to bring the word this morning. Lord, you have heard these prayer petitions, requests, and we just ask that you move right now in the lives of the names of the people, places, and things that were mentioned. Lord, you know their needs, you know their wants, you know their desires, and you know what they are asking for. So we ask that you touch them in a special way right now. And Lord, for all of those who did not submit a prayer request, Lord, we ask that you touch them as well. It's just a few of us, your humble servants, that are touching and agreeing right now. And we need you. We need you to guide us. We need you to keep us. We need you to protect us. There's so much going on in this world, fighting, wars, abuse. And we just ask that you move your mighty hand right now and touch everyone our leaders, our community leaders, and even people in our community, our neighbors, just touch them from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. Let your presence manifest in their hearts so that they can come out the next day, next week, next month, whatever the time frame you need to work, Lord, allowing them to be better, stronger, and Christ-like. All these things we ask in your son Jesus' name. And the people of God pray together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Let us now, as God has given so freely and abundantly to us, let us return to God, the gifts of God, for the service of God. Uh, Let us now receive our tithes and offerings.
Dear Lord, we are thankful for this offering today. We ask that you bless those who gave and those who did not have to give. Now allow this church to use these funds to upbuild your kingdom and bless the community. The people of God said, amen. And now please join in our sending hymn number 440, In Christ There Is No East or West, 440. Again, let me say thank you to the White Plains Presbyterian Church family for having me this morning. May God bless you. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for a few of your saints that thought it not robbery to come out and give you glory, honor, and praise. Thank you for the word, Lord. Thank you for all that were here. And as we depart, Lord, just allow one word, two words, three words, all of it, Lord, to manifest within their hearts, spirits, minds, and souls. And Lord, we just ask that you keep us safe during the week and that when we come back again to worship you, that we are ready to worship you in spirit and in truth. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God allow his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, love, joy, hope in your laughter and your leisure, in your good times and in your bad times, and forevermore. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Thank you. 